This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk a little bit about Bitcoin and smart contracts. This has always been one of the critiques of Bitcoin, that you cannot run smart contracts on it, supposedly. And this is one reason that, at least until recently, you had a lot of Ethereans predicting the flippening. The flippening is just the point at which Ethereum's market cap would be larger than Bitcoin's market cap. The flippening, flippening folks have been very quiet over the last few weeks as Ethereum has fallen from 4,000 to below 2,000. But I want to give you my thoughts on layer one protocols for smart contracts or dApps, decentralized apps, whatever you want to call them. Historically, there used to be only one game in town, and Ethereum was very smart about this. They were the only game in town and the only major cryptocurrency that, that let you run smart contracts on the base layer. The problem with this is that the base layer blockchain usually doesn't scale very well. Ethereum has discovered this again in 2021. Gas prices, which are basically the prices that you pay to access the Ethereum computing network and use the computing resources on there, these gas prices or transaction fees have been really crazy for a while. This is one reason that Ethereum is transitioning to proof of stake. Uh, to try to bring these fees down. Also because it's been shown that Ethereum cannot compete with Bitcoin in proof of work. Bitcoin has always had the much higher hash rate and the much, much higher security. So ETH is transitioning here to proof of stake. And the question then becomes, when prices are high, when transaction prices are high on the, the Ethereum network, what happens? Well, there used to only be one game in town, as we said, now there are multiple cryptocurrencies. There are multiple, what you could call layer one or the base layer, uh, base layer protocols competing with Ethereum, including these coins that many of you have asked me about, BSC, Binance Smart Chain, Solana, Avalanche, and there may be a few more that I'm forgetting. I'll link to these links on, on BSC, Solana, and Avalanche as well, so you can check it out. One problem, of course, with Solana, it's very difficult and expensive to run a full node. And so in many of these cases, you're giving up on decentralization in exchange for scalability and faster uh, faster processing. Obviously, Binance Smart Chain is very centralized around Binance. Now, all of these are utility tokens. They're basically tokens, it's like Chuck E. Cheese, where you, you have to exchange your U.S. dollars for tokens in order to use the Chuck E. Cheese uh, video games and, uh, and, and prize machines. And so Ethereum, Avalanche, BSC, Solana, all of these are what you might call utility tokens. You pay gas, you pay these fees to use the computing power of the network. And as I, I've said in previous videos, but it bears repeating here, I'm skeptical that utility tokens can accrue value over time. The only reason that Chuck E. Cheese tokens have any value now is their scarcity because they're no longer used at Chuck E. Cheese. It's, it's ironic that this is the only way a utility token really can become valuable. But I'm skeptical that it can happen as well in the cryptocurrency world. And why is this? Well, it's a basic economic argument. And this says nothing about short-term movements. Obviously, Ethereum is up a lot and a lot of these other uh, utility coin cryptocurrencies are up a lot. But if you extrapolate a final state condition for these, what you see is this process. Gas becomes too expensive on one, net, on one network, say the Ethereum network, so people start building apps or using the computing power of other networks. In other words, they switch from Ethereum to BSC. And we've already seen a lot of this happening already. It's not just theoretical. If someone has an amazing uh, cryptocurrency, and these are for the most part open source, that's the whole point of cryptocurrency, the software is open source, it's very easy for, for someone to come in and just make a copy of it, do a copy paste and uh, tweak some things, and then make their own uh, smart contract cryptocurrency or computing network just with lower fees. The fact that not as many are competing on the network will lower the fees in itself, or you can have some something in the code that says that they're lower, uh, lower fees. And so if this happens, 
if you have people moving to different networks when the transaction fees or the gas costs get too high, you basically have a race to the bottom where the only thing that matters is fees. And computing capacity for smart contracts becomes a commodity like corn or copper. You don't care where your copper comes from. An ounce of copper is like an ounce of copper, assuming the purity is the same, etc. Same, same true for other commodities like corn and wheat, etc. And this is not a great business to be on, to be in, uh, from a profit margin perspective, when everyone is competing only on the basis of cost rather than anything else. So how is Bitcoin different? Bitcoin is different in that its base settlement layer is much more secure. It's much more decentralized. It's leaderless. You can't just have Vitalik come in and reverse transactions like he did with the DAO hack in 2016. Ethereum has this history of constantly changing, of hard forking. This is one reason developers find it so appealing. And this is great for a software startup. If you're trying to create the world's next reserve currency, you don't want it to change that much. It can be very dangerous. Whereas Ethereum has this, this history of hard forking, adjusting its monetary policy, now moving from proof of work to proof of stake, etc. And again, this is not what you see, want to see for the new stable global reserve asset. When you're dealing with large amounts of money, millions of dollars or tens of millions or hundreds of millions or billions, security and settlement assurance become the most important thing. If you're just playing around with a wallet and you have $100 online, you probably don't really care. Uh, you'll go to wherever the uh, gas fees are cheaper, whether it's BSC or Ethereum. But if you're dealing with large amounts of money, you want some settlement assurance and assurances of security. You don't just want your money to somehow disappear in, in a DeFi hack, for example. This is why when you buy a new house, you wire money for your house. We have the Fedwire system in the US. These transactions are not reversible for the most part. Same with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, this is what Bitcoin does very well at the base layer, at the blockchain layer. It's the most powerful settlement system that we've ever seen of a bearer asset. There's no counterparty risk when you own Bitcoin and when you have, call it two, three, six confirmations. In other words, about an hour after you move the Bitcoin, you can be sure that that transaction will not be reversed. Bitcoin is a bearer asset, just like gold, but it's much more transportable, easy to store, easier to verify than gold. So Bitcoin has these very special characteristics and the way it's grown, developers and the community have been very careful to preserve the simplicity of the base layer and to not, to not introduce a lot of surface area that could allow it to be attacked more easily. When you're running smart contracts on the base layer, it's much easier. There are many more uh, holes, possible holes, or bugs or software flaws, and it's easier to have exploits, uh, as we've seen with DeFi. So Bitcoin is hard money, it's scarce money, it's money that settles with very high settlement assurances. These, this settlement is secured by the huge energy costs that, that would need to be expended to rewrite the whole blockchain or even to rewrite the tip of the blockchain, the first few blocks, the most recent blocks on the blockchain. So let's ask, the, ask a question. If it costs the same fee, and that's a big if, and you have this sort of race to the bottom that we've talked about, if it costs the same fee to settle your smart contract transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain, why would you want to use any other blockchain? Why would you want to use Ethereum or BSC or Solana? So my question for you would be, does, and if you're an Ethereum owner or Solana owner, for example, or BSC owner, you have to ask yourself, does Bitcoin eventually eat up all the other smart contract platforms? Simply because very large, very wealthy investors will want a very secure settlement layer they cannot be provided. It cannot be provided by proof of stake. There are too many conflicts of interest. There are too many ways that validators can conspire with each other. And so if you do have that same transaction fee or something that's close, at least large investors are always going to pick the most secure blockchain. And what I would suggest is it means that eventually all smart contract activity could move to 
Bitcoin. And what would happen is you would have the smart contracts run on layer two or layer three solutions, and then they would all settle to layer one, to the Bitcoin blockchain itself. And this would be uh, really the equivalent of, of Fedwire or something like that. And this is what this is the hypothesis that, that only Bitcoin has these characteristics that allow, it, that allow it to become the global settlement layer. And this is how it works. The base layer should be very simple. You shouldn't have a lot of extra data in there you don't need. You shouldn't be running smart contracts right on the base layer um, because it creates makes the blockchain too large. When the blockchain is too large, you can't have everyone running a full node. The memory requirements become more expensive, and so your, your, your cryptocurrency becomes less decentralized. Only a few people in the world can run Solana uh, full nodes to verify transactions. So this is, this is the way Bitcoin is being, base, is being built. The last 12 years have really focused on that base layer, on making sure that Bit, the Bitcoin blockchain is secure. And this is the layer that should be used for large and important transactions like Fedwire that require final settlement and very good settlement assurances. And then you have layer two. We've talked about the Lightning Network where you can have much lower fees. The settlement assurances aren't quite as strong. All the transactions will eventually be, um, be put together and um, settle on the, on the blockchain, on the main chain itself. But you have these advantages running if you're buying coffee or something like that, that doesn't need to be settled immediately on the blockchain. It's a very small purchase. Uh, it can be uh, transacted on the Lightning Network, and then you can have final settlement of larger amounts on the blockchain itself. So I've been looking into Sovereign, which is appears to be a way of running smart contracts on a side chain of Bitcoin. I've been looking into stacks as well. One thing that bothers me about both of these is they seem to both have governance tokens. So there's some um, there's some tokens involved, which for a, uh, a hardcore Bitcoiner like me raises some red flags. And so I don't really know what to think about these two. Uh, there's also a lot of talk that the Taproot upgrade, which is coming in November, will allow smart contracts to be run more easily on Bitcoin. So this is the area I'm looking into now. And the basic hypothesis here is that Bitcoin becomes the base settlement layer for smart contracts as well. If you own one of these other cryptocurrencies like Solana or Ethereum, this is something you need to understand as well and you need to figure out because being able to pick the winner here is going to be very, very important. Ethereum will definitely stick around if, uh, if it's the only smart uh, smart contract game in town. Again, it doesn't mean though that it's tokens that the ETH will actually accrue value. And this value, the value of uh, being able to do smart contract calculations, which is clearly very valuable, that value may be dispersed across other cryptocurrencies. It may be shared by Ethereum and BSC and Solana and Avalanche. And there, there may be no winner take all uh, situation. It's very different for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a store of value. Bitcoin is this secure base settlement layer. It's much more clear to me that that becomes a winner-take-all uh, uh, market, unlike smart contracts, which may just be a utility token market and a race to the bottom, especially if it turns out that we can build a robust system of DeFi, decentralized finance, on top of the blockchain using side chains or using other layer two solutions. So if you know a lot about this, please do contact me. Let me know your comments in the comment section below or contact me by email, which you can get through my uh, through my YouTube channel, or you can just email me at matt at trader.university. You could also DM me on Twitter. But if you understand this area really well, I'd love to, uh, love to chat with you because this is something that I'm currently exploring. I have this hypothesis about how a utility token should work, but I want to see whether it really is realistic to expect smart contracts to be able to built to be able to be built on top of Bitcoin. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. Let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.